beloved of God, as dreamers and seekers searching for the light of God in Christ and yearning for epiphanies that will lead to new life, will you please stand? Go, 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 will you agree? Sorry. Morning, everybody. It is great to see you here in the sanctuary this morning and also to have those who are worshiping with us online. Welcome to uh, worship here at Covenant. Today we're celebrating Epiphany Sunday, seeking to praise God and searching for the light God reveals to us. As you read today's announcements, a couple of things to point out. Sign-ups for the Chili Cook-Off on January the 13th are available in Heritage Hall. You'll also note that there are multiple opportunities for Bible study outside the regular Sunday school hour, and I would invite you to avail yourselves to those. Our next blood drive is on uh, January the 19th. You can sign up online. You see the link there in the announcements. You can use that, and in doing so, you'll give the gift of life. I will say, and I think you'll agree, it's great to have Jewel and uh, her family back with us, isn't it? Yeah? Welcome home. We're glad you're back. Glad y'all came back. <laughs> All is well. Uh, I'm going to remind you not to forget to sign the friendship pads today and to speak with any guests who are present with us, and to each of them, too, uh, an especially warm word of welcome. Uh, indeed, it is so good to have all of you here in person and online, uh, and I'm going to ask those of you who are here in person, if you'll uh, forget to sign the friendship pads, uh, please do that. And it's good to have you here. I may have said about the friendship paths, but sometimes if we don't say it, you forget completely. It's human nature. But uh, please do that. Um, let's now be drawn deeper into God's presence as we continue our worship.
call to worship this morning is a bit different from the center aisle to my right to the organ side. Uh, and then to my left is the pulpit side. And those who, who have, are up here in the chancel helping lead, uh, we're the chancel. So I invite you now to stand in body or spirit and let us join in calling one another to worship. Calling all seekers, all dreamers, all believers. Calling all glass half full optimists and lighthouse keepers. Calling all star chasers and bedtime prayer speakers. Bring your questions, your hope, your faith, your joy, your love. For God is here in this newborn year, full of light and life. Come, let us worship the Lord. The sequence that follows in our worship order today is central to our faith as Presbyterians, for we are sinners who have fallen short of God's glory. Please join me now in the liturgy printed. In our prayer of confession, we often find ourselves following the wrong star. Fortunately for us, God is the map maker. And God's map is measured in grace. Let us pray. God of starlight and map making, we know that in this noisy world, we have to look for you in our midst. We have to walk toward you, just as the Magi did. We have to believe that your love really can and does change the world. Forgive us for forgetting that. Forgive us for seeking you with only part of our hearts. We long to be more like the Magi. May we walk your way every single day. Amen. Friends, I have nothing but good news. Help me proclaim it. Since the very first day, God has taken the pieces of our hearts and said, I can work with that. In our failings, God has washed us with words of grace, belonging, and love. No matter what star we've followed, no matter how far we've walked, no matter how we've gotten off the path, 
God loves us. God forgives us. God claims us, inviting us now to celebrate the light and pass the peace. That was lovely, wasn't it? Thank you for the applause, Joshua. All right, everyone. It is good to be back with you all in 2023. Happy New Year. I haven't gotten to say Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year. That's, that's wonderful. So we just sang about the three wise men, right? What did they follow? The three, we three kings, right? What did they follow? The, the you got it. star. You're right, yes. Exactly. They followed. Guide us to thy perfect light. What is it? The yonder star. Yonder star. That's right. They followed yonder star, way over yonder. So I was thinking about this idea that the wise men, they didn't have the same technology we did, right? They saw a new star, and they were like, this is strange. We should follow. We should go to where that light is shining. It looks so unique. We need to follow it. Why was it shining? The Bible tells us that light was shining on Bethlehem where Jesus was born. So when they were following the light, they were going to come and meet Jesus. That's a pretty amazing thing to find at the end of your journey. They had camels, it's, our stories tell us. They, had to, they didn't have like normal roads probably. They had to like trek across deserts. They found a king, right? We, yeah, we've talked about that. That's a good thing to remember. I want us to think right now, really quickly, what do we follow? What do your parents follow? Can you guys think of anything that your parents might follow? A trail. We follow a trail sometimes. That's right. What else do we follow? When we were traveling, maps. That's right. The thing I, GPS. The thing that I follow, yes. Um, me and my mom. Um, whenever we are planting, mommy always finds um, something in the yard. Oh, so she looks for things out in the yard. That's right, and follows things that she finds in the yard. 
and you find worms. That's a good thing to find when you're thinking. I love it. That's right. So we, we mentioned maps. I was thinking about how much, as adults, we trust in these maps, right? I used to look up maybe detailed directions before I had GPS back in my college days. And, um, <laughs> and, I did, and now I just plug in the address into my phone, and then it tells me where to go. Why do we need maps? I know. This is a... To find out, to find out, the wise men probably didn't have maps. So this is this idea that we have something we follow and we trust in at all times, right? But it's sometimes we need to think about why we're following that thing and why we're trusting it. The wise men didn't have maps. They had to follow the star right. to get to that place. Before there were GPS, there were maps. But there before, maps. before maps, there were nothing. There were stars. That's right. All right. So we can, <laughs> that's right. All right. Let's pause. That's right. Constellations to follow. That's right. All right. Let's pause. We can think more. This is like a whole probably college level course. If we talk about the history of maps and constellations, why? That's right. We'll talk about it soon. But shh, we are going to now remember what we follow into the, the sanctuary. What? <laughs> We follow a light, right? It's kind of like a star, but today Lily brought in the light. And we follow the light in to light our candle. And then we follow the light out. And it's a symbol. And there's a star up here. So I want us to remember that at church, we follow the light of Jesus. And that is the light that the wise men found. Okay. <laughs> That's right. You, it's, it's a symbol. We'll keep talking about it. I want you to, to remember that, though, that we all choose something to follow. And at church, we remind ourselves to follow the light that Jesus provides, okay? Let's say our prayer. And then we are going to walk carefully, slowly, and like we are marching, very slowly, no running, like we're following me out the, out the aisle, okay? You have to follow me. I pretend I am a light. All right. Let's say our prayer, everybody. God. Please help me feel your love and share your love with others. All right, you can't go yet. You can't. You have to follow me. Oh. <laughs> All right, follow me. Can we take oh. Can we go the other way? Good morning. What a tough act to follow. But, um, you know, they set up the scripture beautifully, though. They um, talked about the star and the light, and we're going to talk more about that. Let us pray. Holy God, we know you are near. As these words are read from an ancient story filled with new meaning, speak to us as we seek you. Gratefully we pray. Amen. Our reading today is from Matthew, the second chapter, verses 1 through 12. Listen for the word of the Lord. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to, to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? <clears throat> for we observed his star at its rising, and we have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. From, from you shall come a leader, who is the shepherd of the people of Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they heard the king, they set out and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, 
and they knelt and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be Seeking. We human beings are always seeking something. Fame and fortune, knowledge, respect, success, power, control, college football and basketball wins, good grades, understanding, love, forgiveness, gossip, more time with family, less drama, more patience, peace, deeper faith. You name it, we human beings are always seeking something. Matthew tells us a story full of seekers like us. In summary form, laced with interpretation for our hearing it today with new ears and renewed insight, Matthew's story goes like this. Wise ones from the east, possibly astrologers from Persia, follow the star which they had seen in the night sky, curious as to where it might lead them and what they might find there. They arrive in Jerusalem, where we discover for the very first time their search for the Christ child and his birthplace, so that they might go and worship him as the newborn king of the Jews. King Herod, the reigning Roman monarch, over the Jews, gets word of their inquiry, and of all things, can you believe it, he is frightened, frightened by this infant's birth. So frightened that he summons the chief priests and scribes to ask them where the Messiah was to be born. Of course, they know their Old Testament scriptures, and they answer the king correctly by Quoting the prophet Micah, from Bethlehem of Judea shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. While they give Herod the answer he seeks, does it make you wonder, as I do, why these religious leaders did not drop everything, make necessary travel arrangements, and head out as soon as possible to find and worship the newborn king. Were they afraid of what Herod might do to them? Or, Or were they possibly even more afraid of losing their privilege, their prestige, and their power in Jewish culture if he really were the Messiah of God? Herod then secretly summons the wise ones and instructs them to go to Bethlehem to search diligently for the holy child. And when they find him, to send word back to him so that he can come and pay homage to him. We learn later in Matthew chapter 2, verses 13 to 15, that what Herod really had in mind was a deadly plan of espionage For his intent was not to worship our Lord, but to destroy him. That is, to kill him. Oh, how absolute 
fear of power lost corrupts absolutely and leads us to do sinister things that destroy the lives of others. Then the wise ones go searching diligently for the Christ star, star, the child of Bethlehem, and finding him, they kneel before him whose life is indeed the light of the world, whose parents receive the priceless gifts they bring of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and whose light even to this day the light of this Christ child shines even brighter than a billion suns. A light which the world will never be able to extinguish. At last, in a dream, the wise ones are warned not to return to Herod so he can complete his diabolical plan, but in fact, to find a way home by another way. This is an ancient story, hopefully made new today, because it has so much to teach us. For we, like its cast of characters, are always seeking, seeking something. God, answers, explanations, status, security, you name it. We are always seeking something. In fact, it's the way we are wired. And it is also the way meant to remind us that we are fallible, fickle human beings, every last one of us. That we are that and not God. Humans who doubt and question, humans who fear what the present and the future holds, humans who make good and bad choices with lasting consequences. In recent days, such doubts and questions have risen once again concerning the consequences of poor choices previously made. On January 6th, we mark the two-year anniversary of one of the darkest days in our national history. The breach of the U.S. Capitol resulted in the loss of human life. The safety and well-being of our national leaders and their staffs were put in grave danger including that of a sitting vice president and his aides. Our Constitution and our country's democracy serving as a beacon of hope for the world were sorely put at risk. How could any of that then within the purview of God's will for humankind? On Friday, a six-year-old here in the Old Dominion shot a teacher. How did we ever get so far away from the golden rule? 18,000 Amazon employees are to be laid off within the process of downsizing to begin on January the 18th. And I wonder, will the vast majority of these folks be able to find work to support their families and to meet other financial obligations? A Washington State University doctoral student is now in custody and on trial for taking the lives of four University of Idaho students. Why would he make such a choice and then boldly claim it as his own? And a world leader 
feigning respect for a religious holiday while ramping up his war machine called a 36-hour unilateral ceasefire so the people of Ukraine and Russia could celebrate Eastern Orthodox Christmas. How does that square, you tell me, with the Prince of Peace? and with his Christian teachings that encourage, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. And take down the dividing walls of hostility. Even closer to home, especially when there are no new revelations from God, no epiphanies, no blinding sightings of God at hand, we struggle with the realities of cancer returning, of COVID continuing, of difficult children, of growing old, of limited finances, of job loss and future employment. These and so many other life experiences of unexpected loss and disappointing outcomes overwhelm us and in fact beg the question, why me? Why us? Why this? Why now? Why God? What have we done or not done to deserve this? I will say to you, admittedly, it is really hard sometimes to see the light of God in Christ shining all around us. But then again, we are only human and not God. And because God is God and we are not, God is always, I believe, seeking us out before we find Him. In Matthew's case, God does it via a star in the night sky as a word to the wise. The same word our children just celebrated. Yes, in Matthew's case, God does it via a cadre, of religious leaders who declare Micah's prophecy fulfilled, at least they answer the king. In Matthew's case, God seeks us out, even through a frightened king who points the magi in the right direction to go to Bethlehem. And most of all, through a child the holy child of God before whom the wise ones bow then and still today. The one, the ones, the wise ones who before the holy child offer their gifts and return home by another way so that through them the light of Christ's life Love and legacy, perhaps, could be passed on by them from one generation to the next. I'd like to think that's what happened. I can only imagine it was a story that they would never forget and would long to tell. We who live within the Christian tradition are at our best when we resolve in the dark to find the light of God in Christ dawning, drawing near, directing our journeys, ignoring, I'm sorry, ignoring the dark and igniting our epiphanies and helping us make sense of an often irrational, nonsensical, other than godly world. When I think about the interplay between what God desires to show us and what you and I are ultimately seeking to know of God, this prayer crafted by the Reverend Sarah R. gives me a great sense of peace and increasing hope 
in such uneasy times. And I hope it will do the same for you today. She says, Holy God, we find you in the most surprising places, in summer thunderstorms, in freshly baked bread, in the smell of evergreen, in handwritten letters, in long, winding phone calls, in crowded tables, and a warm cup of coffee. You're all over the place. What good news. Some days it's easier to find you. Like the Magi, we have a clear direction. So step by step, we move closer to you. Other days, the clouds cover the stars. And we lose our way. Regardless of the weather, we want to be people who still seek you. So when the way is clear and we see your fingerprints all over the place, help us give thanks for healthy bodies that can dance and move, for food on the table, for roofs over our heads, for the dreams of this community. Help our seeker hearts give thanks. And when the clouds roll in, and we lose our way when the star is out of sight and we feel far from your reach. Remind us that you are near in food pantries and on street corners, in lonely apartments with dinner for one, in empty refrigerators, in bad dreams, in hospital rooms, in the bottom of an empty bottle and in the bottom of our faith. Push the clouds back and reveal the stars. Call forth our seeker hearts so that day after day we might summon the strength to always be looking for you. God, you really are all over the place. Keep our hearts brave and curious so that like the Magi, we might always be on the lookout for you. That's what Reverend R. says. What a prayer. What a prayer, friends. And what a way to live, stepping out of the shadows, always stepping out of the shadows into the limelight of God's grace. May we dare follow the light of God in Christ, our guiding star, which I said earlier, no doubt or fear can ever overcome. and which always leads us home by another way. Having seen God, and then seeing differently, and in that, following the way of promise-keeping to our Lord and each other, difference-making in this world, that still needs the church, always has, always will. And at last, in the way of joyful living, <laughs> knowing every day that God is in every place. The question is, Will we seek to find God there? Amen. If you believe that, I invite you to stand and let's say together our affirmation of faith. And, and really and truly, when you read this, I hope you'll process too. You can multitask, I know. You're gifted people. 
Let us read together. We believe that faith is active, found on long walks and in long talks, in future days and down memory lane. We believe that those who seek will find, although it may not be what they expected. We believe that God finds us first. We believe that God drops breadcrumbs along our way in the shape of people, invitations, and even starlight. We believe that being a seeker of God, of justice, of community is a holy thing. So we strive to live with an open spirit, with soft hearts, and with room to grow. May it be so. This we believe. Amen. this Lord's Day, out of the abundance of gifts that we have been given, let us receive our morning offering.
let us pray. Holy God, as wise ones who still seek you today, we offer these our gifts and pray you will find a way to make use of them to bless others, which we are confident you will. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. You may be seated. In the life of our congregation, I'm well aware that there are several folks who have been uh, recovering from COVID. There are also those who have been uh, recently diagnosed. And I would ask us to uh, just simply, in a general way, to remember them in our thoughts and uh, in our prayers. Uh, in our morning sermon, I, I mentioned several things that quite obviously... Uh, to you are very much on my mind when I think about our world. And there's always just this fine counterbalance between the blessedness that we feel as God's people and all the things for which we are thankful, and then the pull on the other side, where in our own uh, personal relationships or in the life of our congregation, in our community, and certainly around the world, there are things that we would like to see be better and be more peaceful and loving and kind and joyful. And I would invite us uh, in uh, our prayer here in a moment to remember those things in our thoughts, and not only just for today, but in the days to come. For while we who have been given much have been blessed, um, there are things that trouble us that are very much on our minds and in our hearts. And there are also those who truly need what covenant has to provide in terms of bringing the light and the life of Christ to the world. And we're doing that. And I keep thinking to myself, can we do more? Can we do more? What does that look like? How might you be involved? Let us pray. Holy God, we have laid our lives before you in worship and homage today, bringing the very best that we know, and knowing too that we are um, people who have very much, um, on the one hand, to be thankful for, but also the things that disturb us about ourselves and about our world and our families and other relationships. Lord, we lift all of that up to you today. We pray, O oh God, truly, that your justice would prevail throughout this earth. We pray too, O oh God, that our eyes would be open in our corners of the world where we live and move and have our being individually and especially here collectively as a congregation of your people. Let us, God, see you. Let us serve you. Let us be beacons of hope and light, not to beat people over the head with the scriptures or with what we believe in comparison to what they do but to offer ourselves genuinely to them in your name in a spirit of grace, in a spirit of hope and peace and joy and love. Let that beacon, let this church, a shining beacon on a hill here in Roanoke, have its light extend to this community, the people in it, the people whom we are called to serve through benevolent giving and by other means in the world that has your heart and needs ours too. Lord, accept our praise and our thanks this day. We know you are near. We pray for moments continually of epiphany where we might see you and where we might be seen by you as your disciples who follow in the way of Jesus Christ, in the wise way of the Holy Child, who teaches us forever and always to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Oh. 
Brothers and sisters in Christ, I invite you to go out into the world. I invite you to be found by God, even as earnestly in your hearts you seek him. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you peace, both now and forevermore. Let all God's people say, Amen. Amen.